What is going on guys? So today we're gonna be unboxing the Innovative Marine 30 Fusion Pro uh, long tank. Um, and I also bought the uh, stand as well, the APS stand with it. So I'm just gonna do a little time lapse, show you guys the assembly, and then I'll give you a little update and a rundown of the, the entire tank once it's done. Let's go. All right, and here's the finished product. Looks really good. I can't wait to get the tank on here and see what it looks like. Um, it was moderately difficult to put together just because uh, some of the instructions were, they have uh, instructions for all the different uh, models. So it's a little bit difficult to understand, but once you get a hold of it uh, and understand it, it makes a lot of sense. And these doors are uh, magnetic, so they kind of come out like that. So there's a good amount of space inside. But overall, I really like the, the design and the layout, and I feel like it fits in the space really well. So I'm going to go ahead and put the tank on there, and I'll see you guys after. So I was able to unpack the tank, and I ended up getting it on there um, right after shooting that previous video. Uh, however, when I took one of the filter socks out, it ended up being that one of the baffles in the back that separates the water was broken. And uh, I want to make sure this tank was perfect, so I ended up sending it back. Here's another view right here. Um, and it took about a week for that to get here, so I decided to turn my attention on to the uh, aquascaping part. Uh, I ended up going to buy about 25 pounds of uh, rock that I was going to use, and I had some glue at home along with Instaset. So uh, I looked up a few pictures of inspiration. I'll show these right here. This is one of the ones that I wanted to keep in mind, just as a general... Um, you know designs or just the ideas to keep in mind and so here's a little bit of a time lapse of me building this and i'll show the end product after as well All right, so here's the final design I came up with. Uh, I ended up just taking a, a bunch of larger pieces of this rock and breaking it down into smaller ones and just fitting where I where I felt like uh, it looked nice to put a rock and I would basically just put pieces together and glue them with the super glue and then insta set it, take a look at it and basically just keep adding on from there where I like it. Uh, and I'm happy with the overall outcome of this. I, I would used a reef mortar to put it all together in the end for to make it more stable and i just sprinkled a little bit of the broken rocks up into the crevices to kind of hide it a little bit but overall i think the design's really great and i love the amount of space for coral placement uh, and i think it looks even better once we get it in the tank All right, and here's the finished product a couple weeks after the cycling process. Uh, I believe it finished cycling about three weeks ago, so I've already gone ahead and throw a few, thrown a few corals in there, and I'll just kind of go over what else I have in here uh, in the tank just to let you guys know. So up front here, uh, we have the blue tang, little baby one right there, um, along with two clownfish and a clown triggerfish. Uh, it is a 30-gallon tank, so I know that these will likely be moved later to larger tanks as they start to grow but at their size right now it doesn't seem like it will be an issue to have them in the tank um so the tank will be helping a lot with the algae control um so yeah it'll help out quite a bit uh, and if you can see in the bottom left corner over here i have a pulsing xenia hoping that will kind of take over the back wall the tank grow on the back and kind of just give a backdrop to the rocks there um and then in the front left over here we have a uh green hammer coral about three heads splitting into five so that thing will take up some real estate over there which i like um then we have a blasto in the middle right here tough to see from this angle with a duncan as well which is sprouting a few new heads so it's pretty cool uh there's a mini scully right here 
this one's new uh, in the sand. It's just a little baby one, but. Um, and we also have a green leather up here and then a GS Green Star Paul up here, the ultra neon green one. Uh, I'm kind of hoping that will take over and kind of build on the back wall. Uh, I placed it really low in the tank because the GSP generally likes to grow toward the light. Um, so yeah, I placed that really low, glued it down there, and hopefully it'll kind of grow up and give a backdrop for that, that rock on the right, which has a couple zoas on the back, but other than that, that's about it. And I'll show the rest of the equipment on the build right now. All right, so now I'm gonna go over each component of the tank and just lay out kind of the cost and how much everything costs me to put this together. Uh, just to give you an idea of how much it would cost to set up a tank similar to this one. Uh, so the tank itself right here is the Innovative Marine Nouveau Fusion 30 Long. Uh, so the it holds 30 gallons volume, um, but the displays port part of it probably takes up about 70 or 80% of that space. And the rest is actually taken up in the back with the sump area. Uh, or the, the, the all-in-one filtration section. Um, so the tank itself actually came out to $535 for the tank part. Um, and then I bought the APS stand that goes along with it uh, that I showed in the build earlier. So it's got all the stuff underneath it. It's holding the buckets right now and all the dosing components and things like that. Um, but that, that stand itself also costs $438. So this one was just custom made for this and it was easiest and I really, if this was going to be my dream build, I kind of wanted to make sure I got everything right. So uh, I ended up getting the, the uh, stand that fits it the best and I ended up costing the money, but I think it'll be worth it in the long run. So uh, right now, we, as far as lighting goes, we have two Amazon LEDs. These are $75 each on Amazon. Uh, I'll see if I can leave a link in the description, but... These lights are great. Uh, I've used them for a while on one of my previous tanks. And you know, all that I know is it does grow coral, but de definitely that will be the first thing I would like to upgrade on this tank, but they were cheap. Um, I already had them laying around, so I decided to throw them on there until I can get an upgrade in there. But that's what I'm running right now. Uh, so as far as the flow goes, I'm running one wave maker right here. And that is actually the uh, JBow SOW4 pump. Uh, so this thing cost me about $54, and I'm running it currently on two with wave one. So it simulates waves, and you can kind of see it on the dunk in a little bit, the movement. So it, it does the job. It gets gets everything moving a little bit in there. You can see it on the hammer as well. So it does the job, and it was $54, and I think it's really worth it, and it makes the tank that much better. So, So as far as filtration goes on the tank... Uh, I purchased this media basket from Intank right here. This is for the 30 long. Um, it's pretty much just a basket that allows me to hold filter floss. Uh, I didn't want to run a whole another media basket over here, so I decided to run one of these. So I purchased that for $30 from Intank. Um, so that's worked really well for me. I like to just put the floss in there and fill, uh, change it out every three to four days. Uh, right here, I'm running an Eheim uh, 150 watt heater, and that's running in the back sump area. Uh, there is a return pump in here that's returning the water right here through these two return nozzles. Um, and then on the other side here, we're running a, uh, a media basket with a filter floss on the top. And then we have uh, Kemi Pure Blue and a couple other, I believe, carbon on the bottom as well. Um, and then as far as the auto top-off system goes, I have the Auto Aqua... smart ATL light and I bought this on Amazon this is about $70 uh, it has a, a very small pump that I put in this bucket down there and it basically just senses right here it's this green little sensor um, it senses when the water level drops below it and it fills it up with water it does this that and for $70 you can't really beat that and the last thing that I have running with the tank right now um, is this Inkbird controller that I have. I'll try to put a link up. But basically what this does, this is a temperature controller. Uh, I have it set at 78 degrees, and whenever it drops a degree below that, it will uh, go to a heat setting, which I have a heater plugged into. Um, and it also has a setting for cooling as well. So if you, you wanna plug some fans into that that can run on the tank, you can do that as well. And once it goes over the temperature, it'll 
turn that on to cool the tank down. So that really helps with the temperature control and is very important. All right, so I just got out my calculator and calculated all the components of the tank together. Uh, I included roughly 50 or $60 for the cost of rock um, and a few other things such as the uh, Dr. Tim's bacteria, nitrifying bacteria and things like that. Um, I kind of threw some, some costs in for that as well and it basically came out to a rough value of $1,390. So that was the cost uh, mainly taken up by the stand and the tank itself. Uh, and with all the other components, this whole tank to get it up and running would cost about that. That's not including the value of the fish or the corals in there. Uh, I did have those from previous tanks, so uh, I ended up just throwing those in there. But the rough value of the whole tank itself was about $1,390. So I hope this helps, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And please leave a comment, like, and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this and more updates in the future. See ya.